I'm going to demonstrate a way to remove a one-way bearing out of a T-Rex 700 clutch. Um, first thing you're going to need is a set of bearing pullers and you're going to need a heat gun and you're going to need uh, a big crescent wrench. Now this is obviously not the only way to remove a bearing but it's it's the way I remove the bearings because the the uh, bearing pull pullers are pretty cheap. Um, I use them for a, dot, a lot of different applications. Um, I just wanted to go over this uh, in case anyone's ever you know, wondered how exactly you remove that bearing. Um, it is pretty big, uh, it does require a little bit of effort, uh, but with the right tools it's not a big deal. Um, first of all, uh, I use a, um, this is a 13 millimeter socket and then I fabricated myself a, uh, a washer. Um, it's just parts that I've had laying around and accumulated over the years. I've, I've got a washer with a screw and a, you know, it all kind of fits in there just, just perfectly. Um, really, you just need something that you can set on top of this, this socket so that you can then set that on top of that one-way bearing just like so. And then you, you mount your bearing puller on top of that and then you, you heat everything up really good and then that bearing will just push right out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right quick and show you just how easy it is to pull these out. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything lined up. No big deal. <clears throat> and you obviously want to use the right size socket so that, you know, obviously if it's too big, it's not going to go down through the center of the clutch. And if it's too small, um, you'll have an issue with it uh, wobbling around on you. And it'll make the job a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> Get everything lined up here. And that looks about right. All right. Once you get that heated up, you may want to use a towel just to hang on to, to the bearing pullers because they can sometimes get kind of hot. And then uh, you get your wrench on here. And you want to work kind of quickly because uh, usually these metals will, will start to cool off pretty quick. And as it cools off, uh, you'll lose some of the ease of pushing this through. Alright, it started, and so now my socket is basically fed down inside the bearing inside the clutch. And so all I've got to do now is just take this and spin, spin, spin. And you can see it's it's starting to come on out of there. And it's it's real nice and easy. I mean I, I got the clutch good and hot and it's just uh, easing on out. I mean there's just nothing to it. That's it. Just like that, you've got a really hot. And there's your, there's your clutch. That's super hot, so be careful. Um, and so there's your bearing. 
And so to get that back in there, uh, what you would want to do is, you know, set your tool and everything back up and get it to where your, your bearing sits down in there just right and then get all your stuff back together. And this time you won't use the socket. We'll just set this off to the side. You don't need that. You would then just set your washer on top of your one way and then set your one way on top of the clutch and then take your, your bearing puller and set it back down on there and then you're just gonna push that bearing right back in. Of course, we're gonna have to heat this up. So I would sit here with my heat gun and you know, and I would heat this clutch up really, really, really hot. I mean, probably hotter than I just got it because you're gonna kind of fiddle around with it, um, you know, getting everything set back up. So get this just extremely hot when you're going back in with it. And then go ahead and take you some, some sleeve retainer green thread locker and go ahead and just rub down that bearing so that you you know you have some some adhesive in there to keep that bearing from slipping or, or coming out and then set that back on there hook it all back up and then push it in real quick and get it all nice and flush the way it's supposed to be and that's it that's all there is to removing and installing a one-way bearing